The baptism certificate is my great-grandfather's who lived in Madras during the 1800s. I found it in the church records at St Mary's Co Catholic Church, Armenian Street, Chennai. The records are locked away in a tiny cupboard and it would fare well in any typical office setting. There's no conservation to mention and the volumes are stacked like school books. However, when you delve into each book, another story unfolds. They're quite beautiful objects. The paper washed with years is stained, printed, scratched and marked. The script is exquisite because it's written by an unknown scribe, a clerk in a matter of fact way. It's another entry, another day, another marriage, another birth, another death. Each line tells of a different life, of people I will never know, will never meet, have conversations with. And yet, and yet the connection is visceral. When you spend your whole life looking and finally you find something that connects you to place and people, the feeling is, and remains, overwhelming. A typewriter hammers letters into a list. The colonial flotsam and jetsam. A girl moves from a wooden house on the outskirts of Rangoon, Burma to a brick house in the north of England. She is just one of the incoming passengers. For my mum, the young Joyce Teresa de Cruz, her new home would be 17 Kenilworth Road, Leeds 12, West Yorkshire, England. In the ship's passenger list, the new address is mentioned along with her student and unmarried status. The document, a hand-typed unknown clerk at the port of Liverpool, is an endless list of migrants, each seeking a better life, or running from an old one. On the 30th of September, my mother, then a 15-year-old girl, arrived in Liverpool, England. She describes in an interview I made with her in 2014, the shocking cold, brick buildings, and a friendly porter who offered to carry her luggage. Did you want to leave? We didn't really know whether we wanted to or not. We had to. Mm. There's no, no, way of, no way of saying? No. Mm. So it was a bit sad leaving your friends and leaving, uh, sailing um, off to a different land. During the 1950s, the SS Solween a 7,066 ton passenger ship had taken countless families from Rangoon, Burma to England. En route, the ship would stop at aid in Yemen amidst a Suez crisis, and this unassuming Catholic family would slip by unnoticed, even as history was redrawing the geopolitical map. My father, grandfather and grandmother, the three portraits, also immigrated from Burma to the UK, they all took the same ship, the SS Salween, at different times. Grandad, Henry Vincent Lazaro, in 1956. Grandmother, Enid Georgina de Cruz, in 1962. And my dad, Desmond Anthony Lazaro, in 1960. They emigrated at different times because of divorce. A family fractured in life, yet bonded by the will to leave, to go north and start afresh. A narrative that continues today with the ensuing exodus in Europe. Each member of my family passed through the Suez Canal, either in the middle or the aftermath of the Suez Crisis, 57 to 56. I've always been fascinated by the Suez Canal, the fact that the French and the British literally cut the line through a continent in order to control the flow of oil. I wanted to make a red pitch white cloth painting for some time. Although in the work, I wanted to use both sides of the cloth, each suggesting a different entwined narrative. One, the painted side, my mum's journey. The other, an embroidered motif taken from bygone maps. The faded black and white image is my mum's family in Rangoon, circa 1950s. 
just taken before they set sail for the UK. The image below, the Polaroid circa 1970, is me and my siblings. Taken outside our house in Leeds during my sister's first Holy Communion. The text is taken from tiny letters, declarations, lodged and found at the back of my great-grandfather's birth records in the old church, Chennai. The words reproduced in the painting are more or less the same, each a declaration of faith. As a satellite image, the canal seems like a fractured line dividing a country, a nation and people. The fact that Colonel Nasser took control of the canal symbolised the end of the colonial world and the birth of the new. Soon after arriving in England, my grandfather, Albert Joseph de Cruz, bought a house in Leeds, number 66, the Hollis Tong Road Armley. It was a typical working class area with Victorian through terrace houses, known as back-to-backs. Taken from the same period are the small Polaroid format paintings gleaned from my father's 8mm cine home movies. Like most celluloid from the 60s and 70s, they're slightly tarnished, often out of focus and at times double exposed. So one particular reel I'm seeing is a chubby infant sitting on a bed as a cold stream guards march past Buckingham Palace. Mum poses for Dad while standing beneath Queen Victoria's statue and the red arrows, the fighter jets, from the Farnborough air show fly by. It's all a bit mixed up like memories and childhood. Things get misplaced out of order as we replay them in our minds. Nevertheless, they tell a fascinating story of settling in England. The immigrant story unfolds in glorious technicolour, suddenly breathing life into the disjointed past. England for centuries has been an idealised homeland, one separated by distance and birthright, to which people, like my family, suddenly came face to face. They seem to carve lives out of thin air, negotiating these imaginary homelands on a daily basis. The old, what they left behind, and the new, what they moved towards. In Crossing the Med, I reimagine a well-known miniature painting, Crossing the Ganges, by Nainsuk, the 18th century miniaturist from northern India. In Nainsuk's original, an entire kingdom of people attempt to cross the river Ganges, while their city is ablaze on a nearby shoreline. The boat is an escape, but to where we are unsure. The passengers, much like the refugees that have become commonplace in the Mediterranean today, are caught between the world they leave behind and the world they seek. Again the question is, what are they looking for as they exchange one set of realities, identity, for another? And how different that is from the My Family's Crossing back in the 1950s through the SSL Reen which took the same Suez Mediterranean route. What has actually changed during the last 50 years? The urge is even greater, but so too are the risks.